Good afternoon. Saving your eyesight. We can all agree this is an important thing. If you've ever watched somebody who is sightless navigate through their day, you can have great sympathy on what an encumbrance that must be. So I have some great tips for you today. But they're not tips about using good light, making sure your prescription is up to date, or any other sort of eye saving, sitting far enough away from the TV, other eye saving devices. It's about how not to shoot your eye out. And anybody who has seen the old Christmas movie, The Christmas Story, knows about the Red Rider BB gun. This is very similar to that, but it's not the Red Rider, Rider BB gun. First thing you need to do is make sure that you are well prepared for the holidays, because this is the time of year when about a thousand people in America are going to lose their eyesight. Make sure you are not one of them. One of the things you can do, make sure you have plenty of these around. And it was a little bit hard to bring today, but this is the other thing that can help mitigate your risk. Can you see what this is? Somebody in the front row? What is this? Ice cubes. Ice cubes. Right. And you may be thinking, well, ice, towel, ice pack. No, it's not that at all. It's that this particular projectile comes in a bottle like this. <laughs> You see, this is about six atmospheres of pressure. That's huge. That's huge. And every time somebody releases one of these corks, it's subject to flying out and exploding. And a thousand people will be doing this about the time it comes out. I once had a friend. I still have this friend. But he once told me the story about his honeymoon. Now, you can imagine. He just got married. You just said goodbye to the last guest. You're now in your hotel room with your new spouse. And you're opening a bottle of champagne. But instead of doing what you thought you were going to do, you end up in the emergency room. <laughs> you end up with a torn retina for the rest of your life. Because he didn't have this, and he didn't have ice. Now, why the ice? Make sure, before you open your bottle this holiday season, that it is well chilled. Because the cool temperature will help deactivate the gases that build up so much pressure. Okay? The other thing to do is to make sure you know how to open your bottle. Now, that, this is called the foil, and it serves a very important purpose, and that's called marketing. Okay? It makes the bottle look pretty. Because once you take the foil off, like many of us, we look much better with our clothes on. <laughs> and now you have what is called the cage. This is safe. I can point it at you, and you don't have to worry. But as soon as you unleash the cage, which you do with a constant number of turns worldwide, whether it's champagne or cava like this from Spain or sparkling wine from California, count them with me. One, two, three, four, five, Six. Okay, so you know when you're getting close. I'm going to keep my hand here because this is like a loaded gun. This has been out of the refrigerator for at least an hour since I left home, and it's starting to get warm, so this could go up, and I'm not going to stand over it and look down. I'm going to use my next device, okay? The flying ghost. A couple of reasons. If this cork does fly off, this adds a substantial amount of drag, and it makes it harder for the cork to fly across the room. And if it does... He's going to see it, okay? Evo's going to say, hey, I've got something coming at me, he'll duck. This thing by itself is a little bit harder to see, okay? So use this. The other thing it does is provide a little bit of a grip. And then what you want to do is hold the bottle here and twist down here, okay? Ooh, that was not what I'd hoped for. You want it to sound like a soft, they say it's like the sigh of a contented woman. Or, man, one would presume, but nonetheless, I'm holding it here because it is leaking out a bit. I'm going to hold it on an angle. Can you see what's coming up to the top there, Allison? Yes, bubbles. Bubbles. Now, by holding it like this, I give it a much broader surface level with which those bubbles can escape. If I were to do it like this, it would just be foam. <coughs> As it was, there's just a little bit of that whiff of yeasty oh. goodness that uh, we will all enjoy. Then... That's pretty much it. You've saved your eyesight. You're safe for another year, or at least for another bottle. 
and you've mitigated the disaster of the why. Now, once it's open, it would be a shame to waste it, wouldn't it? So, let's see what else we have in our bag of tricks. Mm, probably not. Uh, these are far less than ideal, but to me, the perfect glassware for any wine is a glass that will get the wine to your lips without spilling. So I invite you to pass these around, if you would. Take some this way, and some this way. And leave one, for, I'd better make sure it's okay first, just, you know, just to, just to see. You can just put a little bit in there and go back to work with alcohol on your breath and have that uh, for your next review. I had my review this morning. <laughs> they won't remember a year from now, that's for sure. So, here we go, and when you get something in your glass, I would like to raise it to Jargal and say good luck and goodbye, and it has been wonderful to knowing you, and hopefully we'll get to know you again upon your return, if you choose to come back. So, cheers. <laughs> Mr. Toastman. Hey, thank you, what a wonderful speech.